Hi, my name is Jasmine. I'm the owner of Home to My Soul. It is a candle website and you're on Candle Chats, watching Candle Chat today. So I want to speak about what is the purpose of your current relationship or the purpose of your current soulmate? What are they here to teach you? What lesson? So before I get into the pick a card um, or pick, pick a pile, I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, I believe that each and every person is here to teach you something. We're all teachers and we're all students. None of us know everything because we're all evolving. So as we all evolve, there's no possible way that anyone can have all the answers to everything. So with that being said, we learn from each other. So the purpose of this reading is what is the purpose, what is the lesson that my current soulmate or boyfriend slash girlfriend is here to teach me? So this could be a life partner or a soulmate, but I'm leaning more towards soulmates who may be in your life temporarily. Um, or they could be in, like, in your life forever. It just may not be as a husband or a wife, but they might be your friend forever. Or maybe they are a husband and a wife. Who knows? Depends on where you're at. But if you're watching this, um, I believe that the universe does give us messages in divine timing. So if you're watching this now, it's because you're meant to watch this. Something um, nudged you to watch this. So this message is for you. Whoever you are currently with, whoever you're currently in love with or have a crush on, or are um, flirting with and, and you have like a good vibe with them or, or a crush on them or whatever have you, what is the purpose that they're here to serve? So thank you for watching Candle Chats. Um, these are lit candles right here. These are lavender candles. That's why they're purple. I hand make all of these and um, I hope you enjoy the setting. So take some time, relax. I burn sage just to let you know I have sage here. I saged before I shuffled the cards and picked them and I prayed. I prayed for divine guidance that whatever messages are in these piles are definitely meant for you to hear because they came from up above and I am just a channel who's channeling these messages to you. Sage wards off negativity. A lot of cultures around the world use this, but it is mostly associated with the Native American Indian culture. They would smudge sage during ceremonies, whether it was a wedding or a burial, to protect the people in the ceremony and to ward off against negativity, negative evil forces, for those of you who know. Um, so I did sage. So take a minute, choose either pile one, pile two, or pile three. And let's begin. I'll begin with pile one. Now, normally I would pick pile one from the from this side, but I did it from here for some reason. I don't know why. But this is pile one, so let's begin. So what is the purpose of this person who is currently in your life? We have Krishna, devotion. Trust your spiritual guidance. Your commitment has been recognized. You are loved unconditionally. Devotion. Okay, so the person that you are currently with this is blue, this is definitely different. They're probably a unique person because this is blue skin. It reminds me of an avatar as well. Um, Krishna is a religion. It's, it's um, a little similar to Christ consciousness. That's why Krishna and Christ sound similar. Devotion, trust your spiritual guidance. Your commitment has been recognized. You are loved unconditionally. Devotion. Okay, so this person is devoted to you or you are devoted to them. That's what makes sense, obviously, is this devotion. Um, devotion is a spiritual, it's a virtue. It's definitely something that's positive to be devoted to someone. Um, but it's different from loyalty. Devotion and loyalty are different, even though they're similar. When you're loyal to someone, um, that's a scary thing sometimes because you can be loyal to the wrong person and be like a slave, right? So there's been a lot of people in the past who have been loyal to, let's say, their 
their presidents or their country and they went off to war and they killed people in the name of whatever because they were loyal. And that loyalty can sometimes backfire if you're loyal and you're doing things for the wrong reasons just because you're loyal to one person. But devotion, when you're devoted to someone, it's more like you're not just loyal to them, but you, and I don't want to say admire, I want to say that you are in amor. It's almost like being in love, but devoted. Like it's a natural feeling of, of wanting to be loyal, but you're not forced or obligated to be loyal. It's more like a natural organic thing where you're just devoted to that person. It's a natural commitment, which is what it says here, commitment. It's natural, it's organic, it's a devotion, it's, it's a passion to be devoted to someone, to be committed, to be loyal to someone. But again, it's not, there's no like intellect to being devoted, like, a, like loyal, you have to be loyal because it, you know, there's like a rule or guidelines to be loyal because you have to. It's, it's devotion. It's, it's definitely natural and loving, a beautiful commitment. More natural, I guess, is the word to say. So let me just read the other ones to pull out more of what that means. Mm. You also have here, everyone is doing their best. And it says in the back, I'll read it to you. There are really only two types of people, those you now love and those you will love. Until there's only one type of person and then we'll probably hit replay. The game of life, the universe. Okay, so there are really only two types of people, the ones you now love and those you will love. So you're devoted to someone or someone is devoted to you and this is saying this could be a person and everyone is doing their best. Okay. So regardless if this person stays in your life or not, they're definitely devoted to you because they're giving you their best. This is confirmation from the universe that they're devoted. They're giving you their best. But if they are not the one that you're supposed to end up with, they are showing you how to be devoted and how to give your best to prepare you for the person that you will end up with. Because like this card says, there's two types of people. Either the one you now love or the one you will love. But actually it doesn't say or, it says and. So this could be the same person. They're teaching you, regardless of whether they're going to stay in your life or not, they're definitely teaching you how to give it your best and be devoted. So take that lesson. They definitely are teaching you, do your best until there's only one type of person and then we'll probably hit replay. So if this is the person that you choose to be devoted to or they choose to be devoted to you, you'll constantly be learning how to, to, uh, to, to keep on keeping the fire burning over and over so you don't lose love for each other or get distracted or, or fall out of love with each other, but you actually continue to keep the fire burning. So whether or not they're here to stay or not, they're definitely teaching you some beautiful lessons in a relationship to be devoted. They're devoted to you, that much we know for sure. Everyone is doing their best. They are doing their best. The other card you have, hmm, the Nat Kumara, light activation. Shine your lights, your internal guidance is coming through loud and clear. So, light activation. If they're doing their best, and they're also devoted, and this is light activation, then this is confirmation that it's whatever is happening is being activated. It's definitely light. It's definitely, it may even be a twin flame, but it's, it's a fire that's burning with the both of you, which is really, really beautiful. So shine your lights. Your internal guidance is coming through loud and clear. So this one said spiritual guidance. This one said internal guidance and it's coming through loud and clear. So if it's coming through loud and clear, that indicates to me that you needed to hear this message because it's coming through loud and clear. So if you had an intuitive hunch about this person being devoted to them or be, them being devoted to you and this being a good, um, a, a good soulmate, because you know that there's different types of soulmates. Some come with a negative um, lesson to learn that's really harsh, but it's still for your greater good. This one looks like it's pretty positive. This is a, a light, loving soulmate. This is a positive one. So they're definitely teaching you, 
it's definitely good. That much I know. Let's keep on, let's keep on um, looking at the other cards because there's a few of them in the pile. Share a breath, 49. Share a breath. So it's like you're breathing the same air. Let me read a little bit more into that one, share a breath, because I want to investigate that. This is from Trust Your Vibes Oracle, share a breath. So let me just read that. And it's number 49. Let me just go into it a little bit deeper. One of the best ways to open up positive communication and good vibrations with others is to share a breath. Observe their breathing pattern and match it with your own. Do this for four or five breaths longer if possible. You can enhance this rapport by breathing deeply in through your nose and exhaling slowly through your mouth. This relaxes your muscles, relieves tension, and opens your fifth chakra or communication center to a higher vibration. So this has to do with communication. I'm going to keep on reading. Sharing a breath is particularly effective when you feel anxious or are having difficulty understanding or agreeing with another. It's a powerful technique in diffusing conflicts because your spirits connect and establish a common vibration, making for harmony in thought and emotion. A shared breath is a shared spirit and invites solution, creativity, and cooperation to any situation. This is exactly what is needed right now. Okay, so in the other card, you have everyone is doing their best. So if there is a little bit of conflict, know that this person is devoted to you regardless of what... Um, conflict is happening and this is saying to share a breath this is not that bad at all this is definitely not a negative situation share a breath means that if you do happen to have a conflict and there is a little bit of back and forth a little bit of disagreeing just relax and share a breath because you're both in this relationship for a reason you both chose to be in this relationship and it's a positive relationship so you don't want to um miss miss see the, the beauty of the relationship by one little thing that may go wrong because things always go wrong. So just, they may be here to show you how to relax a little bit. You have something beautiful here. Don't mess it up just because of one little hiccup, you know, because sometimes a small hiccup can literally turn into like a snowball. It just rolls down and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it was for something really minute. So if there's a small little hiccup in your relationship, um, take a breath, take a breather, relax. Um, because this is a good person. I feel like this is a good person. They're devoted to you, so, and they're doing their best. You know, so sometimes, even if you do go your separate ways, you don't always have to end off in bad terms. People can be friends after things don't work out. You can have a beautiful remembrance of this person. So take a breath, take it easy. You don't want to lose this connection. This is a really positive connection. That's what I feel. You still have more cards, so let's keep on reading. Decide decide mm. number 29 so when decide comes up there might be a decision maybe you're deciding if you should stay with this person or not maybe there's a, another person a third party in the situation because this card that said everyone is doing their best on the other side it also said there are really only two types of people two types of people and this one says decide so those you now love and those you will love. So the one that you're with today and the one that you will be with in the future, the one that you will build the future with. So you have to decide, is this person for the moment or is this person for the long haul? If there are two people, you need to decide which one is for the long haul. If there aren't two people, which I think there might be actually. But if there aren't two people and it's just one person, you still need to figure out if you want to be with this person for the long haul so you can make space for the person that's coming in your future. Because if you don't make space for the person who's supposed to come into your future, you'll block that. Because God is not going to give you anything in your hand if your hand is already full. If I'm already holding this candle and you want to give me something, I have to go, okay, hold on, let me just put this candle down. And then I'll... I'll take whatever it is that you're giving me. So we can't give you something if your hands are already full. So you have to decide if this is the person that you want in your future or not. Share a breath, relax. Whew. And if they're not the person for your future, that's okay, but just relax because it's still a positive connection. It's still a positive person. They still came into your life for a reason. You don't want to let go of something with bad energy and then have bad karma for the future because what goes around does come around. 
So definitely, um, okay, here's the next card. Are you ready? Ooh, you know what to do. So right after the side, I said, you know what to do, which means that your intuition is working and you need to trust your intuitive vibes. Because it says here, this is confirmation that you already know what to do. Look at that. You know what to do. Now I'm going to read the back. The back says, in all battles of the heart over the mind, go with your heart. Because truly, it's a lot easier for your mind to catch up with your heart than for your heart to catch up with your mind a whole lot. Not that I don't love your mind. Sign the universe. So I want you to read that for yourself if you can. Do you see that? That's amazing. It says, in all battles over the heart, over the mind, in all battles of the heart over the mind, go with your heart. So you have here spiritual guidance with devotion and internal guidance you got with the light activation, internal guidance. Shine your light, light activation. Your internal guidance is coming through loud and clear. Read that. Your internal guidance is coming through loud and clear. Your internal guidance, and you also got, you know what to do. So your internal guidance already knows which one to choose. You already know what to do. You already know if this person should be in your life for the future or not. Now, word of advice. <laughs> Like I said, karma is a real thing. What goes around does come around. And if it doesn't happen in this lifetime, it may happen in the next. I believe I was born with good karma because I probably did good things in my previous life. So things do have a way of catching up, even if it's, you know, in another life or in, in another form. Who knows, right? Because um, there's more than just this world that we're in and this body that we're in. We just keep evolving and evolving. But karma is our energy. And our energy is created through our choices and our behavior. We attract certain energies and we also repel certain energies. So um, regardless if you're going to choose this person or not, be gentle. That's my, my advice because you wouldn't want someone to be harsh, right? So with your heart, right? So, so take, take a breath. So the first one was Krishna devotion. This person is devoted to you or you're devoted to them. You also got this card. Every, everyone is doing their best. They're devoted to you and they're doing their best. But there's also a choice because there's two types of people, the one now and the one for the future. You got, then you got this one. This was the next card that came, light activation, internal guidance. Inside you have some guidance and it's asking you to decide which way to go. Each person is going to determine a lot when it comes to your future, you know? If you're into any biblical or spiritual um, motivational speakers, T.D. Jakes is someone that I like. I like a lot of different ones, but he's just one of them. And he talks about sometimes the difference between a season is the person that's in your life. You can meet a person that can literally open up so many doors for you. Just one person can change your life. And that's very, very true. So decide very, very, um, carefully who you're going to choose because they, your partner influences your life big time, more than a friend, more than coworkers, the person that you sleep with, that you're having sex with and being intimate with. They will stain your aura or they will clean your aura or they will boost your aura. So decide carefully who you're going to intertwine with on that level. Share a breath. When you're deciding, take a breath and relax. Make sure that um, you're compassionate whatever decision you make and you already know what to do this is confirmation that whatever you're feeling in your heart don't logically think about it because our mind plays tricks on us our heart can too of course but when it says heart i believe it says intuition it's hard to fall in love it's something that people dream about if you're lucky enough to actually be in love with someone and have real love don't um bypass that because of another person who might be intellectually the better choice because if you're not in love, you're going to regret that down the road. You want to be happy because intellectually, like 
things change, circumstances change, things always go up and down, but who you're in love with, that's like, that's a treasure and you cannot find that anywhere. So definitely whoever you're in love with, you already know who it is, choose that person, decide. So I believe that this, what this person is teaching you, the lesson of this soulmate is to follow your heart and trust yourself. Your internal guidance, trust yourself, follow your intuition, your inner guidance above all other voices, above all, everyone is doing their best. And um, they're preparing you, definitely. If this is not the right person, they're preparing you for the right person that you are going to be with. You need to decide. You definitely need to decide. Okay, so that's for pile one. Thank you for watching. You can follow me on www.hometomysoul.com and you can order a candle. They're handmade by me. My energy is activated in them and I sage all of my candles so they have really, really good positive energy. Moving along to pile two that has rose quartz on it. Ooh. Okay, so pile two we have. Hmm, ooh. This is about sex. <laughs> It's called Sir Nunes, life force. Express your driving passion. Sensual and sexual powers are increased. Sexual powers are increased. So this is, um, this looks like the woman's vagina in, in a little way, kind of, sort of like the ovaries, the vagina in the middle and all that stuff going on up there. Um, so life force. So having sex is very powerful. It's very beautiful. It's healthy to have sex. Sometimes, um, we don't want to get addicted, of course. Um, if you have too much sex or if you have sex with the wrong person, it could be very detrimental to your health, to your emotional well-being, spiritual, all of that. So negativity comes with sex, but so does positivity. If it wasn't for sex, none of us would be here. Sex is the driving force of life. So this card is definitely talking about sex. So this is someone that you probably have, probably have a passionate sexual relationship with, and that's positive, but let's dig in a little deeper to see what this relationship is um, teaching you or showing you. Mm, Isis, magic manifesting. So this is a woman who's probably watching this. This is empowerment for you. I already have a feeling. Magic manifesting. Your dreams, visions, and goals are becoming reality. Stay focused. Okay, stay focused. So you're a powerful person. Whoever is watching this, you already understand the law of attraction. And you are manifesting your dreams and goals in your career or maybe somewhere where you want to live or travel or move to. But something, you have a vision already for something. And this is telling you to stay focused on what that vision is because you're currently manifesting it. I'm not sure if the sex right now is a distraction or a boost, but let's find out. Definitely stay focused, though. What you give, ooh, what you give will come back. What you give will come back. See that? It says, when in doubt, give. Let them have it. Surrender. Make peace when there's doubt. Oh, when there's no doubt, give. Let them have it. Surrender. Make peace. Okay, so whether in doubt or whether there's no doubt, either way, just give. Let them have it. Surrender. Make peace. Did I make life too easy? Sign the universe. P.S. There's no doubt who is number one in my book. Shh, meaning you. <laughs> so you are worthy, right? You are number one. So when in doubt, give, let them have it, surrender, make peace. When there's no doubt, give, let them have it, surrender, make peace. So give. What you give will come back. So there's a sexual relationship here. Um, what you give will come back. I want to keep on reading what this means. Maybe you're in a sexual relationship with someone who's also helping your career and what you give to each other is like a positive karmic um, thing. I also have another card here. If they once loved you, they still do. Ooh, look at that. Okay, so it says, thanks for every single time you ever fell in love. Whether or not it was obvious, whether or not it lasted, and whether or not you were loved back, it changed everything. Actually, you're always loved back. The changer signed the universe. Okay. Hmm. 
Thanks for every single time you ever fell in love. Whether or not it lasted and whether or not you were loved back, it changed everything. That's true. Actually, you're always loved back. That's true. Love does change things. So what you give will come back. If they once loved you, they still do. Someone from your past is coming back. That's what that sounds like to me. Um, so maybe this person is showing you that, that second chances do exist. Um, sex. There's a, there's something has to do with sex. I don't know if someone had an affair and had sex with someone they weren't supposed to. <laughs> or if um, you had sex with someone and then it was a sexual relationship and then it kind of dwindled away. And this is saying, don't worry, they'll be back. So maybe you just have to take some time apart. Sometimes um, a person comes into your life to show you about your, your career and your dreams and your visions that you can make it, whatever that is, whether you're an entrepreneur or a, um, an artist or working up the corporate ladder in school, wanting to graduate and, and study something really, really hard and be a scholar at that. Whatever it is, um, sometimes people come into your life to push you and to make you better. So they might, maybe um, this person came into your life for that and whether or not you're leaving them or they're leaving you, they'll be back. So sometimes you have to pursue something like your dreams and you can't be in a relationship, but you'll be back. And it's not always about sex. I want to keep on reading, see what else comes up. Mm, sleep on it, which also has to do with sex in a way right because of the bedroom to sleep on it number five i want to read this okay oh and there's a star here the person is pointing to their heart if you see that right there there's a star so sleep on it so someone was definitely pursuing their dreams sleep on it let me just read that to go into a little bit deeper number five when your emotions get stirred up and work overtime they block access to your higher awareness at times like this, do not struggle for answers. Instead, step away from the problem and literally put your worries to bed. Surrender your concerns to higher forces while you slumber and invite your psychic support system, your angels and guides, to find solutions to your challenges and place them directly into your subconscious mind to be accessed the minute you wake up or shortly thereafter. This process is practical sixth sensory living. Your guides love to work on your behalf and will offer better solutions than you could ever dream of without their assistance. So relax, grab a pillow, and give your emotions a well-deserved break, sweet dreams. Okay, so this is saying whatever is going on, just sleep on it, relax, the answers will come. You don't have to figure everything out right now. So if someone left, will they come back? Most likely they will. This is what you give will come back. It also says if they loved you before, they still do. If they once loved you, they still do. So don't worry too much about what you did. Maybe you did have an affair, I don't know. Don't worry too much. All is love in the universe. There's so much that we don't understand and there's so many lessons that we need to learn to expand our hearts, to be compassionate and to be forgiving and to be understanding. So no matter what, in the grand scheme of things, there's always love. Love is what runs this universe. Love is what keeps the breath and the spirit going. It's, it's love. That's why things produce and things are fruitful and they grow. It's so people can use it, so they can eat the fruit, so they can walk across the bridge, so they can swim across the ocean, so they can trade back and forth. Everything that this universe creates is for love, it's for prosperity, it's for multiplication. So whatever happens, it's all love. And everyone is evolving at their own speed and in their own time. The next card that you have is let go. Interesting. Let go. I'm going to read a little bit about that. Number 27. Sometimes the most powerful psychic solution to a difficult or compromising situation is to simply walk away. This is one of those times when the situation calls for letting go, backing off, surrendering your ego, and leaving. You're in a deadlock of fixed vibrations and feelings that are too great for any positive solution. 
through further engagement. In walking away, you protect both yourself and all those involved from even more frustration and allow the universe to work behind the scenes to restore harmony to all those concerned. Move on, have faith. No one is working against you. It's as though you're pushing on the door to get to the other side when it opens inwards. Step back and give things room to move back to center and they will. So again, I'm gonna repeat that one last sentence. It says, step back and give things room to move back to center. Give things room to move back to center. So this says, let go. You got to sleep on it. Sleep on it and then let go. In the morning, you'll know, just whoosh them off. Let it go, let it go. Because if they once loved you, they still do. They still will. Let it go. Sometimes we have to let something go and wait till it comes back. It says, what you give will come back. So whatever is going on, remember what I said in the, in the first reading. I don't know if you watched it or not, but um karma is real what goes around comes around and if it doesn't come back in this lifetime it'll come back in the next lifetime so what you give will come back so regardless of if there's an argument um and something happened maybe someone had an affair again because this represents sex or maybe someone was just too egoic and they were all about their own dreams and they didn't make time for you maybe that was you maybe it was them whatever happens Love is real. If they loved you before, they'll love you again because love is something that is frozen in time. Whether they realize it or not, it's there. And we're all learning. And we're all growing. So all is love. All is well in the universe. But also be mindful because what types of lessons you learn are shaped by the decisions and the behavior that you make. So be gentle. Um, even if someone comes at you hardcore, be mindful if they do come at you aggressive, be mindful of how to walk away, of how to defend yourself, but to defend yourself in a way where you're not stooping down to their level and you're not adding fuel to the fire. Because when you see two people, two people fighting and they go, look at those two crazy people fighting. No one knows who started the fight. They just see two crazy people yelling and screaming at each other. So don't let somebody lower your vibrations if they don't understand or if they're mad or if that's you. Be mindful. Be the bigger person. So what you give will come back. Remember, you have this card. Now, after let go, the next card you have. Mm, what would love do? Okay, so what would love do? I'm going to read to you what it means. Do you know why it's so easy for us in the unseen to quickly pinpoint your whereabouts? You leave behind footprints of love. Aww, sign the universe. P.S. The legend of Bigfoot continues. That's so cute. The legend of Bigfoot continues. So you leave behind footprints of love. So again, this has to do with karma. So this is saying the unseen, like the angels and the spirit guides, they can see everything. This is confirmation that what you do is being seen by the unseen. So even if nobody knows what you're doing, spirit world definitely knows what you're doing. So you can't hide anything. So you want to take actions with love, even if that means letting go. If you're having an affair, you know, don't beat yourself up if it happens to be you, but just make a choice. Don't go on cheating and lying and don't stay with someone who's cheating and lying either. Um, if you happen to be unhealthy, because again, this has to do with, with um, sex. If you happen to be unhealthy, get yourself healthier. Be honest with people. Don't um, mislead people and lead them on because what you give will come back. And that's what that is saying. So be honest. What would love do? What would the spirit world advise you to do? What would positive, courageous, loving and compassionate, confident gods and goddesses tell you to do, okay? Fearless, loving, self-loving, and also giving and generous. What would they tell you to do? So if you're a god or a goddess, Isis, if you feel like you're Isis, and you're pursuing your career, and you're making your dreams come true because you're very focused, you also have to be good to people, not just your career, but also to people. 
So maybe what this person is teaching you is how to let go when things are like really that bad, not to fight back, but to be the bigger person and act from your loving higher self. Act from your loving higher self. So regardless of what is happening, do not stoop down to that level. So in the future, when conflicts arise again, you can handle them better, more responsibly, more intelligently, more compassionately. But you can really find solutions instead of making something that was bad worse. Take something that is bad and make it better. Try to find a solution. And if you can't, the solution sometimes is simply to walk away and let go. So this person is teaching you how to handle conflict. That's what I believe. If they once loved you, they still do. And it's also teaching you that no matter how bad it is, love will always save the day and they will still love you and they will forgive you. Forgiveness, I'm getting forgiveness. I'm getting that from this reading because if they once loved you, they still do. And what you give will come back. If you forgive someone, they will forgive you. Even if it's not that specific person, someone else will forgive you in the future, a different person in a different way. So I'm also getting forgiveness. Love is real. Love is the only thing that's real. So that's what I believe. You're focused, you're strong, but be loving. Does that make sense? What would love do? This is popping out the most. What would love do? If you consider yourself a powerful woman or man, then act out of love no matter what. What would love do? And love is not being weak, by the way. There's a thing called tough love, too. All right, so closing number two. Closing this up. Thank you for watching. Visit me on www.hometomysoul.com. It is a candle website, but also it's mystical and spiritual. Um, I'm an artist myself. I'm a singer. So definitely check out my website. And you'll see more um, videos, self-help videos. Not all oracles. Sometimes they're just self-help videos. Um, on being discerning, on finding your purpose in life. So many other things. So definitely check out the website, www.hometomysoul.com. These are my candles. Again, this is my rose petal candle. But moving along to pile number three. This is tourmaline. I love this black rock. Tourmaline. This is one of my favorites, actually. All right. My sage is still burning. Mm. So what does this person can't come? What has this person come to teach you? Pile three. Compassion. Care and compassion. Choose to be love. Do what is right for everyone involved. Offer a helping hand. Care and compassion. They're asking you to be compassionate. Imagine if you were in that person's shoes. Okay. You see that? That's a king. The first, the other pile that we have for pile two was Isis, Egyptian. Now we have the other Egyptian king. These are both Egyptian. This card is from the Oracle of Light, Keepers of Light, I'm sorry, the Keepers of Light, which has many different deities. I mean, they're not just Egyptian. Some of them are Indian, some of them are Catholic, some of them are African, some of them are alien and angels all a variety of different types of deities. The fact that I just got the female Egyptian queen and now the male Egyptian king, there's something going on with a twin flame, I kind of feel like, if you're watching. Because remember, messages come in, in different ways. And whoever's watching this, you'll know what message you need to grab from this. Ascension. Move into your true self. Rise above the darkness. The light is here. Okay, so... 
compassion. This has to do with darkness. So be compassionate with this person who has been through some dark times. This is darkness. But they're also ascending. They're teaching you how to be stronger because ascension means to go higher and to rise further, to ascend. You have to be compassionate as this person pushes you. This person is pushing you. There's darkness here. You also got laugh. Laugh it off. Laugh it off. No matter how bad things are, laughter can raise your vibrations. I'm going to read a little bit about this one first. Uh, Serapis Bay Ascension. Let me just read that and then we'll go into laughter. Uh, hold on. Okay. So Serapis Bay is the light keeper in charge of Ascension. He once served as a priest in Luxor, Egypt, helping those passing on to cross over into the lights. Now he is a presence we can call on in order to ascend. Ascension means rising up. It reminds us of the story of Christ being resurrected after death. This means that Serapis Bay can guide us from the lowest states of being back to the light. His energy is almost like that of a phoenix, giving us the support to move out of our own hell of darkness into a space that supports our growth. Extended message. The stars cannot shine without darkness. You may have experienced a low state of being, trauma or depression, but this is a new beginning. Become aware of growth. This, there is always room for improvement. There's also a sense of presentation now. You may be receiving documentation or certification to acknowledge your growth or experience. It's important to cherish this time and to realize that without the challenges or obstacles you have faced, you wouldn't be as strong, powerful, or focused as you are today. You are ascending personally and spiritually at this time, and the universe is here to support it. Okay, so again, ascension. This confirmed what I was saying. Um, the stars cannot shine without darkness. The stars are gorgeous. People always talk about the light. And we talk about the yin and the yang as if the darkness is bad and it's unnecessary, but it's very necessary. The darkness is very necessary. The problem is, does the darkness master you or do you use the, mas do you use the darkness and master it. Let the darkness serve you. If you're on a battlefield, you have to have backbone. You have to be strong, you have to fight back. When someone is coming at you, let's say someone's trying to kill you, are you gonna stand there and let them kill you or kill someone you love? You're going to fight back because you love yourself and you demand to be treated with respect. You're not gonna let somebody just walk all over you. God wouldn't do that. God comes in, and intervenes. Angels come in and intervene. Saint Michael intervenes, right? He's a warrior. It's not always bad. It's a good thing. But we have to make sure that negativity doesn't consume us, but that we use it to our advantage when we need to. And just because we can do something doesn't mean we should. It's when it's necessary. This is the difference between a king and someone who's not a king. They just are negative and they just want to be egoic and cocky. And if they're taller and bigger or badder and they know they can beat people up because they're stronger, then they'll do it. But just because they can doesn't mean they should. You use your power and your strength when you have to. So this person who is dark, they're saying to be compassionate with this person who has darkness. This person's in your life for a reason. They have dark, but you attracted them for a reason or they wouldn't be in your life. So there's some darkness. Maybe they're not an evil person. I'm not saying they're evil, but maybe there's something about them that's a little off. Um, but they're funny and they make you laugh, right? You have some good times with this person. So sometimes things can be harsh and then you, you're laughing and you forgot all about it. And you're like, wow, I'm in such a better mood. So sometimes they say comedians, for example, um, live the most depressing lives, and that's why they're so funny. So the only way they can survive is to actually make jokes about what they're going through. And they can hit you at such a level, it makes you laugh because what they're saying is so true, and they have the guts to say it. They have the guts and the courage to speak about topics that nobody else wants to talk about, but it's funny. It's funny as hell, right? So laugh, it raises your vibrations, and it keeps everyone on a common playing field. 
on a common field where we all laugh at the same thing because we all understand, like, wow, that's true. Like, let's say they're joking about politics or religion or, but it's, but it's funny, right? Because these things really exist. Like, we live in a world where there's just different points of views. And some people don't want to talk about certain things because they're a sensitive topic, you know? And we want to be politically correct and not talk about certain things. But a person who's a little bit dark is very bold and very honest. And they will talk about it. But it'll make you laugh. The next card that you have is, huh, hubba hubba. How funny is that? We got laugh, and the next card is hubba hubba. That's not serious, right? That's very light. It's like, someone is laughing right now. I'm going to read to you what the back means. You know that dreamy look of deep, soulful love? You've sometimes seen in the eyes of another as they gaze into your own. Expect a lot more of it. Woohoo! The universe. Okay, so this person, and you know what's funny? If you look at these eyes, look at the makeup on his eyes. That's dramatic. And this card is telling you about the eyes. You know that dreamy look of deep, soulful love? That dreamy look. You've sometimes seen in the eyes of another as they gaze into your own. You've, yeah, expect a lot more of it. See that? Expect a lot more of it. All right, so this person seems like they're probably pretty aggressive, they're funny, they're bold, they're passionate, hubba hubba. Hubba hubba can mean husband. I don't know, maybe. I'm discussing with that one. You got what do you love? What do you love? Number 23, transformation. What do you love means to talk about the things that you love. You love this person. You're compassionate with them. You want to read the last card. Okay. No two flowers are the same yet all are beautiful in their own way. Okay, so no two flowers are the same. Obviously this person is different. Um, the eyes, that makes them dramatic, it's different. Uh, with this on top of their head, it's, it's, they're a king. They're definitely a different kind of person. They're funny, they're dark. Um, and again, I was talking before about the lights and how we have darkness in the world, but it's necessary. The darkness and the light are both necessary. And this says no two flowers are the same. So not everybody's gonna be very light and free-spirited and, and sensitive and, and um, gentle and, and caring and kind. Some people are gonna be bold and aggressive. No two flowers are the same. And just because it's a flower doesn't mean that it's soft. There are flowers that are even poisonous, right? There's herbs that are poisonous. So, you know, er everything in this world is created differently. There's a purpose for everything. So this person is who they are and you can't change them, okay? They make you laugh though, which is really funny. And if you did change them, they would lose a little bit of their edge. They're in your life for a reason. You can, don't change them. Whatever you love about them, keep loving what you do love about them. What do you love? Talk about what you love about them instead of about what you hate, instead of what you hate. Now in the back of this card, it says, comparisons are odious because they presume all things are equal, see? Which is never the case between me and you slash the universe. Comparisons. So no one is the same. Comparisons are odious because they presume all other things are equal, which is never the case, it is never the case. So everyone is different. Do not try to change this person. This person came into your life to teach you about compassion, to make you stronger. This person came into your life to make you stronger and to show you to accept people as they are. If you're gonna love someone, love them for who they are. And if you can't, then they're just not the one for you. But don't try to change or control somebody or else you're gonna attract somebody who's gonna try to change and control you and you wouldn't want that, right? So, um, and why? We're not children, right? You don't want anyone to treat you like a child. You, you should know who you are. Even though we're always changing and improving, at the core, you know who you are. And you don't want anyone to, like, you know, 
tell you what to do and to guide and manage you as if you can't handle things yourself or know what's best for you. You have your own intuition and your own internal guidance. You have your own mind to think for yourself and to reason for yourself. You know what feels good to you and you know what feels bad. So don't try to change someone else if you don't want them to change you. If you do try to change them, notice what you're attracting. So this person came into your life to make you stronger. I don't know if they'll stay there forever. They might. It says expect a lot more of it. This person's going to stay a while for a while. Because it says, you know that dreamy look of deep, soulful love? You've sometimes seen in the eyes of another as they gaze into your own. Expect a lot more of it. So this person's going to be in your life for a while. They're going to make you laugh and have a good time. Number eight. The number eight. Laugh. Eight. So this is definitely a soulmate. Eight is eternal. They'll come back around. Maybe not in this life, but in the next life. But they, they will be back for, again somewhere down the line. Care and compassion. Be compassionate with this person. Put yourself in their shoes. They're dark for a reason. Something happened to them. That's why they are the way they are. But they're also tough. They're a king. They have backbone. So learn from them too, you know? Don't think that just because they have darkness that they can't teach you something other than compassion. There's other lessons that they're teaching you as well. They're, you're ascending from this person. You're gonna become a better person. Don't let the lesson pass you by because then it'll just come back again in a different person, in a different shape and form. So let this person teach you because they're a master at something. Hubba hubba. They can probably get you prepared for your future husband if they're not the one. They can prepare you for the one. Okay. So that's what I think you're reading. That's what I feel that it may be. Laugh a lot with this person. Laugh it off. Laugh a lot. Definitely laugh. Laugh. Make them feel good. They've been through a lot. See, no two flowers are the same, yet all are beautiful in their own way. They've been through a lot, and they have beauty in them as well. So look at the good in them. This is asking you to be compassionate. Look at the good within this person. They're probably very handsome, too. I just have a feeling that they're really good looking. All right, well, that's it for today. Please visit my website, www.hometomysoul.com. I made these beautiful candles. I made the rose one behind me, which that's actually Woodwick. I'll show you a little bit closer. That's a Woodwick flame. So if you like wood, it's different from Echowick. These are the mason jars. This is lavender. It's wet because it's already melting, the wax. It burns very high, so this is not a wood wick. This one is an echo wick. So they're a little bit different. And I put the little bow to make it cute. And that's lavender scents. I have lavender and jasmine, and I also have this one, just in case you're interested. This one has a lot of different flower petals and herbs. This is called a spell candle. And the reason why it's called a spell candle is because it also has sage inside. Um, it also has rosemary, real rosemary, the actual real herb rosemary. It has thyme, um, rosemary, thyme, and sage, the real one. Um, it also has flower petals, jasmine, rose petals, and lavender petals. It is jasmine and lavender scented. It smells more like lavender. It has a stronger lavender scent with some notes of jasmine. And I have three drops, just three drops of pure organic um, oregano oil and eucalyptus oil. So with all of those ingredients inside, it's um, mixed, it's supposed to attract positivity and luck. Everybody knows that sage does that, obviously. So there's rosemary, these are, are good to protect you from negativity. So with all of these ingredients and then you light your candle, it's definitely a positive aromatherapy, it's a, a positive attraction factor. So thank you again for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this pick a card reading today. Um, again, thank you. My website is www.hometomysoul.com and I'm Jasmine Clemente. And thank you for watching. Namaste. Thank you.